Hey, hey, school zone audience coming at you from sunny Stephenville, Texas, Central Texas, about an hour and a half southwest of Fort Worth. And uh, we have um, my good friend Lisa Riggs from San Jose, California, um, in the school zone today. Um, she and I actually ran into each other, I guess it was about 18 months ago, Lisa. Yeah. Out at yeah. California PTA, I believe, in San yes. Jose. So, wasn't, was that your very first uh, venture into the whole PTA event thing, if I remember it right? It was. Yeah, it was the very first venture. I was really nervous because I was kind of testing the idea, too, since this is a new idea to just – see are the schools gonna like the idea of customizing the socks and it went really well so i felt validated and we've we've moved on to more and more pta conventions from there and we we recently ran into each other at the at the texas pta in dallas here i guess in july so um cool to have you back on the show thanks for letting me come back i appreciate it and yeah dallas the 108 degree dallas convention <laughs> You know, nothing like a warm welcome, right? <laughs> exactly. I appreciate it, Texas. <laughs> so for those that don't know, Lisa's company, Spirit Socks USA, um, really, really, really neat story, how she got it all started and and the success that she's had since since jumping off into the school fundraising industry on her own. Lisa, kind of give us a little background on you for those that haven't heard your story, where you came from, you know, how you got Spirit Socks started, that type of thing. Sure, sure. I was, you know, I live in San Jose, so Silicon Valley, so worked in high tech, um, had my kids and didn't feel like high tech was a fit for me for the type of parent I wanted to be with my kids with the volunteering that I wanted to do. So, threw everything into volunteering and running fundraisers at the schools. Um, I ran everything from script to walkathons to, um, you know, major fall festivals, all that fun stuff. So I was on the education foundation for our district and I was running the after school sports program for the middle school and was trying to figure out how do we increase, how do we incentivize donations? Because we ask for donations when the athletes play the sports so we can fund the program. So I had this idea to do socks and customize them with the Moreland Mustang logo and went out to all my t-shirt people and um, none of them did socks and I couldn't believe it. So I finally found someone to do them. He was late and the, the just he ended up out of business three months later, which I wasn't surprised. But kind of when I ran the fundraiser at the school, like we, I, we saw donations increase by 140%. I saw people who had never donated before turning in wadded up $1 bills because they wanted their kids to have these socks. They were so excited. And so the success of it, I had to reorder. Actually, we sold 200 in less than six weeks and I had to reorder. And so seeing the success of it made me think, gee, maybe I should offer this to other schools and other nonprofits um, and, you know, to help them raise money because I know fundraising is very, very difficult. And especially with the new health and wellness guidelines that are coming out in some of the states, California has a particularly strict health and wellness guideline, which is outlawing a lot of the fundraisers that have food. And so it's really minimizing the opportunity for schools. And so I decided to take a chance and start the company. And it's been a great ride. It's been really, really fun. I'm meeting people all over the country and just hearing about the amazing things people are doing. It's, it's really, really been great. So did you have any entrepreneurial background at all uh, or what made you decide, <laughs> Hey, honey, let's do this. So I know the right answer, but I'm just about, I should tell the truth. So um, I, you know, we, I had co-founded a neighborhood association with a group of my friends and neighbors. I don't know if that counts. Um, we did get citizen of the year for the city of San Jose for co-founding the neighborhood association and how we like, we have 2,500 people and, we did this great thing. And so um, I had a little bit of experience from that, but honestly, it's, um, I've always, I've always wanted to lead things and like tried to step up and, and I'm comfortable in that position. So I just learned, I, I read a lot. I listen a lot. I, um, I use score who is, they mentor small businesses and I just, I'm learning as I go. And uh, so yeah, entrepreneur, solopreneur for the first time and 
And <laughs> so, yeah, but I, you know, the, the benefit of it, it offers, since I am doing this by myself, is I know I can guarantee the customer service for my customers. And I love the one-on-one -on -one with them and, and just really trying to help them. So there's some, there's pros and cons to being a first timer. <laughs> so how do you go from being a fundraiser that has socks from a vendor to now, I mean, you're running your own company, providing even better product, et cetera. I mean, how do you, how do you make that transition? How did, how did you even know where to start? Um, I started with a name, honestly. And, um, and that was, that was in, in a website, like got a domain, got a name. That was kind of the beginning. And then um, it took me about, I would say a solid nine to 10 months to really get the LLC and get, you know, all the boring details set up, but mostly to find a manufacturer, work with them, only to have them drop me when I was ready to launch. Um, they up minimums, they up the prices for just because they could take advantage of me. And so oh, back to square one, found another man, had already been talking to another manufacturer. And so, yeah, it, it was a solid nine month process to get it started. And now I'm on my third manufacturer because I'm continuing to try to find better quality. And, you know, the product is what's going to define the success or failure of this business. And, um, and I, I want my customers, like, that's the most important thing because it's, it's the quality I provide them. But then for them, it's the quality they provide their families and their parents. They, I don't want their parents and families coming back to them unhappy with the quality. So that's, I find that that's the key piece of this whole thing. So explain more in detail then about Spirit Socks USA, what you do. And uh, let, let's get more specifically into how you can help the folks that might be listening raise more money sure. for school. Sure. So the great thing about socks, they're, they're very popular right now. I think a lot of people know that. You see people expressing their personality with fun pairs of socks. Um, there's sock shops that are popping up all over the place that sell only socks. And some of the socks in there are 40 bucks. And so socks are really a popular thing and, and a fun way to build kind of pride or camaraderie or, you know. Um, and so basically, so like leading off of that is we can customize a sock for anything. So a lot of the, a lot of the schools and, and nonprofits definitely want to use them as a fundraiser, but then it's how, what are you trying to raise money for? What, how creative can we get with the sock? Um, I just had one last night who they want to do Socktober, you know, and so we're creating these really fun socks. We might even have a student design the sock and then they're going to sell them in Socktober. And so there's so many different things you can come up with. And so schools and, and non, well, schools mainly will use them for spirit wear. They can use them as donation incentives for either a donation to the school, to the PTA. Um, we can use them for events like fun runs, jogathons, uh, fall festivals, um, teacher appreciation gifts. So pretty much, I even had um, George Washington Elementary, we did their, Washington is their mascot. And so it was President's Day fundraiser, right? So you can, you can be as creative as you want and the sock design can actually meet that creativity. And so it's, it, it's open. Oh, even golf tournaments too. We've done a lot of golf tournaments for nonprofits. And um, actually I am providing socks for St. Jude's Walk to End Cancer in San Francisco in September. And so we made these great socks um, that say champion on them and they're gonna go to the top fundraising teams. And those fundraising teams are gonna get to wear them as their badge of honor um, in the walk to the walk run to end cancer in September. So you can, we can be really, really creative. So uh, are they, could you better describe them? Uh, are they striped? Are they uh, embroidered? Are they, uh, you know, how does the production, how, do, how does that kind of stuff work? Sure, sure. So the socks are, you, every sock is unique because they're designed specifically for that customer. And then we go through that design process, you know, making changes and making sure that they're exactly what the customer wants to see. So each sock is actually very unique. So stripes, maybe. Stars, maybe. Paw prints, sure. And so um, the socks are custom knit. And so what that means is we take the design and only those yarn colors and we build the sock from scratch. And so that allows us not only to make sure it's a high quality sock, but we also can modify even the sizing because we start every sock from scratch. 
And so, um, so yeah, so they're custom knit. They have a reinforced toe and heel. They're an athletic crew sock most of the time. Um, we also do dress socks, but they've got like a nice arch support and um, just the quality, very high quality. And then they're also durable and comfortable. So when you said that like there was a saying or whatever, is that just woven into the sock itself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole sock is custom knit. There's the opportunity to do the printed socks, but often those don't have the same quality. So yeah, we would take your, um, you know, what's, what's your favorite animal? Oh, gee, put me on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I raised chickens, so chicken, hey. what the heck? So we can take your chicken We'll name him Fred and put him, we can make an orange sock with a yellow chicken and we can put stripes around him or we can put claw marks behind him. We can do whatever we want to do. But to start that sock when we, when we're um, producing it, we would take that orange and that yellow and only those colors of yarn and knit them together to create your design. That is cool. Yeah. So, so custom from the very, from the ground up, Yes. So let's say I'm an organization. How much lead time do I need to give you guys, you know, to be able to do that customization? Right. Um, well, you know, what kind of minimums, those types of things that I'm sure everybody's sure. wondering right now. Sure. Yeah, that's a really good question. And one I'm getting a lot right now because um, one of the really popular things for the socks is uh, with breast cancer awareness coming up. Um, a lot of the schools and athletes go buy pink socks at the local sporting goods store, but more and more schools were customizing them with their unique logo and the, you know, the pink sock with the ribbon for October so they can raise money. So how long does it take is a, is a very good question. So um, the design process, I can turn it around in 24 hours. So that can go as fast as the customer is willing to work with me. And then for the, um, once that design is finalized, production takes about four to six weeks. Right now, it can take a little less in the winter when it's not as busy, but I usually tell people to plan for four to six weeks. And if there's an event, we have different, oh, we shut off. We shut off, Matt. I saw you freeze. <laughs> I hope I had a good, you know, happy look on my face. <laughs> you were just kind of staring at me. <laughs> I just kept talking because I wasn't sure what to do. <laughs> okay, so go back because our internet connection connection there was kind of funky for about 30 seconds or go. So go sure. back to what what is the turnaround time? Um, sure. You know, and those types of things, how far in advance I need to be thinking and getting in touch with you, that type of stuff. Sure. So the design, I can turn around the designs and they're free and no obligation, by the way. Um, I can turn them around in 24 hours. So I, I can work as fast as the customer wants to work with me. So we really, in fact, yesterday, I, we, we've, turned a, we've turned an order around. We placed it within 18 hours because she was ready to go that quickly. Um, so once the design is finalized, production takes about four to six weeks because of the custom knit process but there is an option of doing a rush. It has a little bit of a fee, um, but that is an option if we have a specific date we need to meet and we just, you know, oh, we didn't plan, we didn't know, it's three weeks away, we can meet those with that rush. So, yeah, and so minimums, you ask minimums are, um, is, is 100 and that's per size, per design. And so we can do multiple sizes, multiple designs, as long as we meet that 100 minimum per. So are folks oftentimes, uh, like when you're dealing with the schools, are they doing them primarily for kids or are they doing a kid size and then they're doing an adult size or how, what do you normally see? Yeah, um, again, this is, a, as much as the socks are custom knit, this is a custom fundraiser for the customer. And so they are able to tailor it exactly how they need. But the socks um, come in two sizes, children or adult. And they're built to be one size fits all within those sizes. So it's meant to keep it simple and keep the ordering simple so that they don't have to, you know, t-shirts, you have to forecast the different sizes and guess, and you end up with that in inevitable leftover box of sizes that didn't work this year. Um, there's none of that with the socks. And then actually handing them out, the distribution is far simpler because it's 
this size or this size. And, and so it just keeps that simplicity. And I, I built that in intentionally coming from my volunteer background. Um, and so often what I generally recommend with the adult size is pretty much middle school and up, you get to do one size fits all. It makes it so simple. Elementary schools often will order a combination of both just because you know you have the little ones, the TK kindergartners, then you have the fifth graders, and then you don't wanna leave the teachers out. They go nuts for the socks. They go absolutely crazy. So it's fun to, and it expands your fundraising audience by including the teachers and the parents that you can sell the socks to. And so often elementary schools will order a combination of children and adult, and sometimes see the adult sizes even sell out first because the parents want them to, so. So do most schools take pre-orders and then place an order and then distribute them or do a, a lot order estimate an amount that they want, order them, have them on hand and then literally sell them, you know, direct with immediate fulfillment? What, what, how does that normally handle or is that a kind of across the board? It's a really good question. And it, again, completely depends on um, if they're having them for an event, obviously you would sell them on site at the event. Um, some schools, some schools, yes, they'll do the pre-orders and then they'll place their orders. Some schools will order bulk up front because that really is, that requires the least volunteer hours and the least work because you just exchange cash for sock. Um, and so often schools, more likely schools do that. Some schools actually place the order and then do the pre-orders during the production process to just kind of bridge that gap and build excitement, build anticipation and start to collect money as well. While the, and then the socks arrive and they've got them. And, and um, I also, I don't require payment to place the order. So I'm able to work with the schools when they do this to have them pay closer towards when they're gonna receive the socks. And that really helps a lot of them if they wanna collect payments so they don't have to put that money out up front. What, um, what kind of markup are most organizations putting on them as far as the fundraising portion? Is it kind of built into, you know, for a 50% or, you know, what do you, what do you typically see there? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and it's one I, the customers ask me a lot and it's one I never answer specifically because everybody's price is going to be dependent on their community, their organization, what's going to be acceptable, what's going to be affordable. Um, and so it's, you know, I, I kind of leave that more to them and I'll talk to them individually about what I've seen and, and what they think and go from it for there. But for sure, we see um, profit margins of minimum of 25% up to, I've seen profit margins of $17 per pair when people got really creative with their donation incentive and that kind of thing. And so it, it really, really ranges. But I would say the general, um, general profit is probably 4 to $5 a pair, which, yeah, which can be, you know, yeah, it, it's quite a bit, actually. It can be 50%. So is there any area where you're not working here in the States or do you have the ability to serve schools or organizations all over the place? And if so, what's yeah. the best way for folks to reach out to you and what's kind of the process? I mean, is it a phone call? Is there a form to fill out? You know, that type of thing. Good question. Um, my, I actually, I have no limits on this. In fact, I've got a, I'm working with a group in Australia who's doing, they, they're the tour to cure. They're doing a bike race in September and I sent them some socks to use as prizes and they're going to blast out Spirit Socks USA and they're trying to, they're raising money to fight childhood cancer. So we're working on this on a global scale of trying to raise money to help people fight for their causes or, um, you know, or, or fundraise for their schools. Um, easiest way to contact me is certainly they can call. The website is uh, probably a really easy um, access point, and that's at www.spiritsocksusa.com. The socks is S-O-X. There's a button right on top that says get your free quote, and you can send me an email immediately by hitting that button. There's also a contact form um, that people, that customers can fill out, or, or potential customers, and attach their logo, their colors, any ideas they've got, tell me a little bit about what they're looking to use, use the socks for, and, and we start the process with that. But they also can call. My number is 888-677-7876. Um, so guys, Lisa and I have gotten to know each other pretty well over the last couple of years, like I mentioned at the beginning. You've got to check out what she's doing. Um, it is so cool to see her business thrive and, and to see how hard she works to serve 
um, the schools and, and organizations that, that her company serves. And uh, if you're looking for something that's unique, something that's different, something that's definitely remarkable um, compared to a lot of other things your school or organization might normally do. Um, we all wear them. <laughs> and uh, so you don't have to worry about selling something that you got to convince people they got to have. And like Lisa said a minute ago, I was just at the airport yesterday and the guys weren't running around wearing their business attire or whatever. The socks were just off the charts, the type of stuff that they were wearing. So, um, you know, if, if guys business, professionals are, are wearing funky socks than, than the rest of us either can or probably are as well. So right. um, spiritstocksusa.com. Lisa, anything else that we haven't covered that you want to make sure that the school's own audience is aware of? Well, because we're in my office, I have a few samples on the desk. Do you want to see any of them? Heck I can yeah. Pull them up. Heck yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, this is the, these are the Lobos that we did and there's little paw prints. Let's see if I can get it. Paw prints on the foot and we did the Lobo on the back. And so um, this is a really fun one. This is a school in Southern California. Um, oh, here's a, get this one. Sierra Vista that we did as well. And so we did the nice Eagles up the back of the sock for them. And then this one is really fun. This tennis tournament is this weekend. And so they are raising money to, um, for local animal shelters. And so they gave these out as swag. We did a women's tennis sock and we also did a men's tennis sock. And, um, and so it's just proof that you can kind of do socks for anything and have a lot of fun with them. So lots of different designs. Awesome. Lisa, thanks for joining us on the school zone. And once again, guys, uh, check out spirit socks, USA at spirit socks, uh, Lisa Riggs, it's a pleasure once again. Something tells me we'll run into each other again really soon, whether we plan it or not. Um, I hope so. Because we're both out doing our thing and, uh, and, and serving the schools and, and the organizations that we work with. So thanks for your time. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. It's been great catching up with you. And thanks for the opportunity to be on the School Zone podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.